Let's say if your child does want to go abroad to study, there has to be a standard way of measuring the ability of your child who lives in Pakistan versus, you know, maybe a parent's child who lives in Mozambique. They don't have, I mean, if you only were to use schools, grades and teacher reports, COVID was a great example of how everybody, every school, when they're given a chance, would inflate grades. So how does the university know? So they have to, so the universities are in, in, in trouble because they have to assess, but they're also told not to assess. In America, they've get they've gotten rid of the SAD from most university admissions, but they still need some standardization, right? So they don't trust third world nations to be honest. So what they do is they have these exams, the UK-based exams, and they need to know where they stand. So it's not going away anytime. So I'm not I'm not advocating for them to go away today because I don't know what's out there. What I can do is what I what I tell parents is that make that part more efficient. Because what's happening right now is, yes, I understand standardized kids are important because that's how your kid will go into places like Harvard or U Cambridge or any other place. They'll see those and we have, and the problem is we only focus on that. So a child's yeah. most of the day is spent ensuring he gets those grades, either be it going to school, tuitions, after school help, all of that stuff. So, so exactly that, right? So as a parent, I have seen a lot of, there are a lot of Facebook groups in Pakistan where they talk about don't pressurize your child. It is exam season. Uh, grades are not everything. However, there is nothing to complement or supplement that statement by saying grades are not everything so-and-so thing also matters, right? And there is very little discussion about that. And maybe we don't have uh, enough dialogue about that also because I schools agree. are have become about the, the standardized uh, grades. Yeah. So for a child to have maybe sports to some extent, extracurriculars, um, to some extent become a measure of the child's worth in his own mind and his parents. Creative um, projects. But what else, right? I mean, you could do projects like creative projects. You could do hackathons. There are multiple ways of measuring it. But again, it's not a standardized way of measuring. It's only limited to smaller communities and all. So that's why schools don't want to focus on that. Sports, yes, because you can do it national wide competitions. Or at least at some level, you can get some recognition. But is that why schools are not innovating? Like, why are schools not innovating? So there are two areas of innovation. You see, one would be why are they innovating the curriculum to, uh, to teach my child more than what just the exam based stuff? The problem is, and this is the problem that they face from parents also. Parents' only true focus is, you. as much as parents like to say that we want our child to learn everything from a school, I have sat in 18, 19 years of parent-teacher conferences. 99.9% .9 of the parents only really ask me about grades and how can they become better. Not any, now how do we become more forward-thinking or ready for the world or the workforce, none of that. It was just literally about grades. And so when is that, then then the business says, okay, that's what the customer wants. Let's give him that. That's so it's, it's, a, it's a cycle. Either in a, it's a private schools are a business. If the customer stops wanting what they're selling, then we change. Mm -hmm. But so the parents are right now, okay, because they only know grades to get their kid in schools. Mm -hmm. So they want grades. So what do we do? Let's focus on grades. The problem is, even when schools want to do more, they don't have enough time left because the way schools are set up, you got five days a week class, you got certain hours, the teacher goes and lectures. By the way, it's completely inefficient. The teacher going to a classroom, asking, setting up, talking to kids, starting the lecture, going, the kid zoning out from one, they're starting the next one. He's also not present the whole day. You should see the kids in my class. They are not primed to be absorbing at that time. It's like when you're playing a sports match or a competition, you know there is, you sleep the night before better, you train, you're warmed up. Look at these kids when they come to class. They would rather be anywhere but there. That's so true. And I see them every day. So first what they're learning, they're not even enjoying. They're not even paying attention. So then the whole day is spent doing that. So where is the time left for anything else? But explain this inefficiency you're talking about. It's inefficient on the school's part. How else? Because you think about this right now, right? I mean, in, uh, when you want to learn something, while, let's talk about learning while you're at work. 10, 15 years ago, when you had to learn something, we have to wait for a conference. We have to say, okay, okay, I'm taking this course, I got to fly down there and the companies would find it very expensive to upskill stuff. Now, how do companies teach? It's all online. YouTube. You, YouTube and LMSs, everything and everything is all online now. It's just like, like you only go to make